Good morning. My name is Paris Tosin. Welcome to Reality Magic 101. This is the first episode of what would be several or many, we don't know. But this is the first one. We've gone through the introductions, we've gone through the more summarized discussions on reality magic and discussing what is reality, what is a reality magician in general, are you one, are you not. I'm hoping that you are or you might be. I'm hoping that through these videos you can discover if you are by understanding what is reality magic and what is the role of a reality magician. Now since this has never really been done before like this, I'm going to develop it as we go along, as I see things are necessary, I will introduce them. I need to make a very important point in the beginning, especially for those of you not familiar with my style. And even you, some of you familiar with my style should be reminded it is kind of a disclaimer. I don't think I should make it, but I think it's necessary to make because some people who are sensitive, some people who are uh, reality magicians, some people who have Stellan heritage, some people who have uh, other sensitivities, you know, some people who can see ghosts, these people are very sensitive to information and sometimes they blur the line between reality and hallucination, between a vision of the future and a delusion. As well, there are negative entities out there, there are negative uh, instruments and there are negative forces, whether it's a naturally negative force or whether it's put out there on purpose by someone or some agency. Regardless, these negative uh, influences can attack a sensitive person and can distort information, can distort perception, can distort a vision. A sensitive person might have this feeling of impending doom, might have even a voice in their head that there's going to be an earthquake over a certain part of Mexico. They'll go on the internet, they'll find the place in Mexico where they think there's going to be a major earthquake that's going to kill lots of people and they feel in their heart that the cosmic energy is shifting. So that supports, that supports their vision of an earthquake. And then they'll go out worried that there's going to be a major earthquake. They might even make a video or write something about this major earthquake. And the sad truth may be that there's, there is no earthquake that somebody put that idea in their head and what happens is when a sensitive person gets an idea they magnify it. This is a power. This is one of the reality magician's power is to magnify ideas. The key is to magnify truth so that they perceive something from the cosmic soup, the cosmic pool which is truth, which is pure truth. They then interpret it, they process it, and they magnify it and share it with society. So the idea that you have an ability or somebody has the ability to magnify something is not a curse, it's a gift. The problem is people can't separate what is the truth and what is a negative influence and what is some dark sorcerer 
telepathically sending, implanting these false ideas or false ideas being told and implanted through propaganda from the TV or media from the national leader who's a puppet for more disinformation. So this is one of the problems that we have with this field of reality magic and why I want to bring out some key principles that if you are a magician of sorts, if you are a highly sensitive person but you haven't the clue what's going on or you're always getting confused, you're, you're having delusions, you've been hearing voices and your parents have put you on medication, this is because you don't have any education. And I don't know why. I don't know why there's no education because one reason is there's no teacher. Because all the teachers out there are maybe delusional or they're so busy trying to overcome their own challenges they're not really getting to the real good stuff. Or the market is just not ready. You know, a lot of the things I've been teaching or sharing in society for the last seven years people very few people want to listen to it and nobody wants to do anything with it nobody wants to really believe it and there are many people who struggle with it and then they struggle to say well what is what is he all about where is he coming from how does he know these things so it's very hard to get the information out and then you get you get these old ideas coming out these false ideas these this disinformation that keeps circling around the idea of the evil alien this has been very troubling for me because when I try to tell people that 97 percent of these extraterrestrial races whom I've met whom I've talked to are not evil when I communicate that to people they have all these evil alien implants I can't get through they look at me as like it's not coming in buddy can't hear you I know what you're saying but I just can't agree with you that's what I'm getting even they know I could be right they just can't they can't accept it because they get all these evil ideas or if I say aliens are friendly they have this old image of a monster it says how can a monster be friendly I said they don't look like monsters well I don't know about that so this is a big big problem with this field and with this the way I'm communicating and if you're familiar with my work I'm pretty much communicating in a very similar fashion for a number of years I've just I've gained more knowledge over the years and I, I, I've understood better what I'm discussing and what people can understand and what people can't understand so I think it's I'm able to now explain things that we can deal with rather than just say things that don't make any sense or people can't understand it so I need to preface this it's a long story but I need to preface this by saying my my method of communication is very direct uh, I can use harsh words sometimes my language is pretty sharp I might say the word vagina I'm not trying to be gross I'm not trying to gain attention but this is just my character this is the way I am I like to use uh, stronger terms. It's my method maybe of, of, of breaking through your ego. You know, reality magic is completely different from the, the love and compassion gurus. The love and compassion spirituality. You know, these, these feel-good teachers go out there and and teach all these things like uh, they'll talk about the law of attraction and if you if you welcome it into your life it will come into your life if you love somebody 
that's the best way to reach them. If somebody's trying to kill you, just give them compassion and, and everything will work out. Love and compassion is the answer to everything. I get these I get these, you know, these quotes on my Twitter feed. If everybody loved everybody, the world would be at peace. And as much as I like some of these ideas, these are very uh, in reality magic, these things don't make a lot of sense because they're completely impractical and they're not rooted in any truth at all. Because we don't live, we don't live in a world where if everybody lo everybody can love everybody because there's a lot of hate in the world. If a guy's got his arm chopped off and you give him love and compassion, he's going to bleed to death. So, love and compassion can't fix everything, can't answer everything. Like they say in the in your on your Facebook feeds and your Twitter feeds. Love and compassion is the answer to everything. No, it's not the answer to everything in reality magic. So I want to separate that. Reality magic, we are a bit harsher. I'm not as uh, love and compassion oriented. But everything to me comes from this love and compassion. It comes from passion for life. It comes from this need to know, a need to be connected, a need to grow and to ascend. It all comes from those things. You know, in my view, from my experience with, the, with cosmic beings and the cosmos and higher learning, there is this, this presence of love and compassion. But I've never had an advanced being preface everything they do with love and compassion. I, don't, I can't remember any specific statement they have given me about love and compassion. They never said, Paris, all you need is love and compassion and your life will work out fine. I do not recall any such statement at all. The statements I recall are very practical. Some of them are quite harsh that I couldn't share with you because they're very, you know, the, the cosmos is very direct, it's very forthright. So to me, a person who has learned cosmic knowledge tends to have these characteristics. So you see my characteristics, I've, I've always been forthright, Sometimes I could be ex explicit, sometimes I could sound harsh, sometimes I might even get a little bit agitated and frustrated and concerned. When something happens in the, in the world and you're not paying attention, I get concerned. I get a little bit angry. And this to me doesn't mean I don't have love and compassion. <laughs> To, to somebody who's been bred and indoctrinated into this lovey-doveyness that if we just all hold hands together all the evil will go away they cannot relate, they might not be able to relate to my method. As well, I might say something like if you're in a bad relationship you better address that relationship or that could undo you. So in a, in a sensitive person, a person who magnifies ideas might just go for the divorce. I'm not saying to go for the divorce. I'm not telling you, specifically you, what to do with your life because I don't know who, who are you. I might say, you know, I might say something, you know, act now if you're in this situation or if you feel like moving, you should move. But we're having a discussion here. You gotta look at your own particular situation. If I say, if you feel like moving, move, and then you feel like moving, and you decide to move out of your apartment, and you don't have another apartment, and you can't afford another apartment, then 
you shouldn't move. I'm just making my I'm just making my presentation. And this is the way I make my presentation. By the same token, sometimes it is true that you should move and you've known you should have moved for four months and you feel like you're ready to move and you could take that information and say okay I've been feeling that Paris is also saying that maybe I should look at it and then you just you make a plan to move in the near future in other words I'm what I'm saying I'm prefacing this I'm taking quite a few minutes to preface this because you don't need to do anything drastic or harsh and certainly do not do anything violent if I say take care of that situation as part of my presentation I don't mean you know go hurt people I myself live a very uh, drastic lifestyle. I myself live a very harsh um, harsh way of thinking. In other words, I myself am the kind of person I myself am the kind of person to be spontaneous. I'm the kind of person who will move within a very short period of time, within a short notice. I myself might end a relationship on a very strange circumstance. So when I speak of these things, I'm also speaking that's just the way I am. But it's a very, to, to live like that, it creates a lot of hardship. And it creates a lot of problems in your life. So I don't, I don't suggest it, I don't recommend it for anybody because you don't want too many hardships in your life because that's going to make your life harder. So when I speak the way I speak, understand, this is the way I speak, it's the way I am in life. I can't, if I conceal that, I'm going to be pretending. I'm, you, you can't expect me to come on here and be all lovey-dovey. Oh, love and compassion. If the child is burning, just give it some love and compassion and the flames will go out. I can't do that. If the child is on fire, you better put it out. You know? If your marriage is in trouble, you better focus on your marriage and not to dream up love and compassion. So, I think that's enough preface. So anybody, I've prefaced other videos like this, so hopefully the word is getting out. I mean, you should know, you should know who's speaking and what kind of person they are. This is the kind of person I am, this is the way I talk. Uh, if you need, if you need a, somebody who's more, who's softer, who's more lovey-dovey, and they use more spiritual terms, who uh, uses all kinds of religious terms and uh, sham, shamanistic terms, then this is not going to benefit you because I'm not like that. My knowledge comes from my experience, my observation, and my research. All of this is rooted in, a, in, in other cosmic arenas. And I have a very forthright approach. I'm not here to um, insult people, but I can be offensive. And I can be enlightening. And why I think this is also important is because if you are a reality magician which I'm hoping that you are or you think you might be or you know that you are you are gonna have some similar characteristics with me you're going to find you're going to share some of my characteristics you might even like some of my style because this is one of the characteristics of a person who deals with reality. They tend to have these characteristics. These characteristics, they came out of me through my experiences. 
And my experiences are with the reality or with cosmos or with enlightened beings. So I've picked up what I've experienced through my environment. Just like when I used to live in China, I started to think like the Chinese and I used to eat Chinese food and like Chinese food and speak Chinese because I was in that environment. I became sort of Chinese. I forgot English. So the same thing with reality. I'm involved with reality. I'm researching things. I'm thinking about reality. I'm looking into the cosmic structures and, and picking up cosmic energy and talking to beings from other dimensions. I've picked up all of these things. So my characteristics, my character has these things within it. And if you relate to that, then that should be further confirmation that you are uh, more related to this reality magic spectrum than to the other spectrums, to the spirituality or shamanism or religion or whatever else. There's a list of things. So, welcome, we'll see where this goes. Today I've got a few things mapped out. Start off with a discussion here. Start off with, start off with a uh, question. I was going to start off with this question, but we got... You can see we're getting into all these discussions already. Here's a question. I'd like you to think about it. I'll give you a choice. It's a multiple choice. And then you tell me which is your better choice. It's for yourself. There's no test. Here's the situation, okay? This is a hypothetical situation. There's a full moon. There's a full moon. Yesterday, a nuclear warhead from the US arsenal went missing. Today the president of the US is making a speech on Iran and suggesting that the US and Iran should be friends unless there's other reasons not to be friends. You had a dream last night about a fish and a whale. And the oldest turtle on the earth died this morning. So you got all that. There's a full moon. Nuclear warheads missing. The president's making speech on Iran. You had a dream last night. A turtle has died. The old turtle has died. Question is, what does it mean? Is it A, you think it's prophetic? You think there's some prophecy involved with all these things? You having the dream and the turtle and the nuclear warhead and the full moon and the president making a speech about Iran. Does it have to do with any prophecy about Iran? B, do you think it signifies the end of the world? Do you think that a nuclear warhead is going to go off and that's going to set off a chain of nuclear warheads? C, do you think that because the turtle died, it represents a loss of wisdom in humanity? And that humanity is going to go through a period of obscenities and violence because the turtle being a wise creature died. Has humanity lost its wisdom which is going to lead to a nuclear detonation and involves Iran. That was C. D. D. All of the above. E none of the above. What do you think?
So, one of the things we're going to learn about, okay, but we'll get back to the question in a minute. One of the things we'll learn about reality magic, reality magic has to do with interpreting coincidence, has to do with interpreting patterns of existence, patterns of events. This is one of the fundamentals of reality magic. Because reality doesn't speak English, it speaks reality. And as a reality magician, you have to interpret reality. And if you misinterpret reality, you misunderstand. And you come up with the wrong kind of conclusion. You come up with the wrong kind of ideas. And I'm seeing this with uh, a lot of people now who, are, who claim to be spiritual and enlightened, claim to be cosmic or divinely inspired or who say they're awake they're doing exactly what I'm talking about they're putting together ideas and events and information and forming a prophecy what is a prophecy? prophecy is what will happen in the future they say well, okay this event is happening that event is happening these energies I'm feeling my left leg hurts, my wife yelled at me this morning, there's a, you know, there's an eclipse, what's going to happen? But you see people doing that on a, a, a magical level, you see people doing it on a, on, a, on a news level, trying to collect news events to predict what some nation will do, or what the new law is going to be about, or, you know, if they're going to catch all the bad guys, stuff like that. So we are doing it. People have been trying to figure it out, and a lot of times they're wrong. And there was this big issue I had last year with these doomsday prophecies. Comet Elanine is coming. The Mayans said it's going to be the end. Um, the president's making a speech. My left knee hurts. The guy had a car accident yesterday. It's the end of the world. So they're, they're putting all these ideas together, but they're not coming up with the right conclusion. Now I can say that now because there has been no doomsday. Because we were told many times that the world's going to end and the world hasn't ended. Edgar Cayce, one of America's most famous prophets, said that, you know, the world would change, like physical landmass would change, the island of Japan would sink underwater, you know, San Francisco would be destroyed, New York would be destroyed, because of all the changes in the landmass and, and the rising of the tides. We've had this for a long time, but it has not occurred. So you can see how difficult it is to foresee the future, but a reality magician has to read reality by putting together all these coincidences and events, by understanding the pattern. The conclusion is not doomsday, because as we'll see later on, there's no such thing as doomsday. There's no such thing as doomsday, therefore there is no doomsday. That's a preface for a future episode. <laughs> but people who don't understand that, especially people who have been uh, educated on re religion and who have been watching propaganda in the movies about end of the world and earthquake and alien invasions, and nuclear winters. They believe in end of the world scenarios. They believe in doomsday. They believe that the Mayans were right. But in reality, magical terms, it's not true. So we're not looking for doomsday when we're putting together ideas and patterns and events. 
we're just trying to read the health of reality. It's like you're a doctor and the patient comes in, the patient says, Doctor, I have a headache, my eye hurts, I've had a sore back, and uh, I got this cut on my finger that doesn't seem to heal. The doctor's job is to figure out what is the ailment, the diagnosis. Well, sir, John, you have an infection. I'm going to give you some antibiotics, right? Now, if the doctor isn't any good, if the doctor isn't any good, you're going to give him the wrong diagnosis, you're going to give him the wrong medication. But the last thing you want to do is, is well, John, your head hurts, you got a cut on your finger, you got a pain in your eye, and you got a sore back. It's the end! You're about to die, John! That's the last thing a doctor would do because he's a professional. That's the last thing he's going to tell his patient. And hopefully the patient comes in before that time. So reality is like the patient. Reality, the, all these things are happening and your job is to understand it. Because when you understand what's happening, you can understand how to apply yourself. You can apply your specific talents. We'll talk about those some other time. You have specific talents if you understand that reality, if you diagnose certain condition and you have the ability to rectify that and you can diagnose it because you have the ability strangely enough then you can apply yourself see how it works you're not gonna get Jesus to come down here and tell you what to do that's not what reality magic is about you know, Jesus is not going to come into your home and says, Mary, remember that magical power I gave you, Mary? Now I want you to use it. Focus, Mary. Focus on the tree, Mary, and heal the tree. Now, Jesus probably doesn't talk like that, but nobody's going to come into your house and tell you as a reality magician what to do at some future point you might have some kind of advisors you might have some kind of communications you might have some uh, meetings discussions that might enlighten you but I'm not talking I'm not talking to people who are normal people you are exceptional we don't know how yet or if you might be watching the wrong video you might have waited your whole life for this video right here expecting some answers later on and I hope to provide some of that and you can see how this is uh, this is very complicated this is not a this is not something simple this is not something that we have a lot of education on so we're really starting from the from the bottom the basics here so you have this ability to read reality reading events reading reality reading the energies everybody has their own approach some people can read energy, some people can read events, some people can read the combination, some people can pick up on human thought. You know, there's no limitation. Like I said, anything is possible, everything is possible. And you might want to take some notes on some key statements if that helps you remember stuff. So one of your jobs is to interpret reality. But you didn't come here by accident you are a reality magician and you have these powers because you are connected to reality you are connected to the earth 
you are connected to the cosmos. So this is not an ego trip. You are not here serving yourself. You are here serving others. You are here serving the needs of the many. You are here serving the earth. You are an integral aspect of the earth. And the earth is an integral aspect of the cosmos. Right? So you, you connect to the earth. You connect to everything outside the earth. You connect to the cosmos. You don't have these powers so that you can go out and serve yourself and drive a Ferrari and be a billionaire. That may happen, but that may happen in conjunction with your work. Now, I'm not saying to be poor and to be starving. You know, you can make as much wealth as you want or need, but I'm saying your magical power is rooted in the earth, is rooted in reality, is rooted in the cosmos. So your greatest power comes from that connection. If you live an egotistical life, if you choose to serve yourself, you are disconnecting from the earth, you are disconnecting from the cosmos, you are disconnecting from reality. And now you're only accessing a, a very small portion of your power. So you are powerless. In other words, you have more power the better connected you are. The better connected you are, the less ego you should have. They go hand in hand. Now some people get so connected to the earth that they lose too much of their ego and they feel lost. They feel confused. They feel it's a hard time living in an egotistical world. So that's your that's going to be your decision how much how deeply you are connected because the more you connect to the earth the more you might not like people right the more you the more people you don't like the more connected to the earth but you have to go to work you have to you have a family you have friends if you don't like them it could be a problem so there are some of these issues that are going to arise that the more the more you develop yourself, the less ego you have, it changes the way you see the world. You know, all of a sudden when you see babies are getting killed in, in a war zone, you get extremely upset. Now, in the past, people said, well, that's bothering me and I'm sensitive to that and I can't stand this, the evil and I can't stand the hatred and they would tend to shut themselves off they would willingly shut themselves off so that they don't have to deal with the the babies getting vaccinated for no reason the children dying in the war the people the, the people getting abused the the church spewing forth other spiritual things that don't make any sense anymore A lot of us have shut ourselves down and then we, we are reminded by these darker entities saying that they don't need you or it's not time to wake up or if you use your power you're going to blow up the world. Now I had this before. I met a girl once on a movie set. It's a beautiful lady on a movie set. I instantly saw that she had an angelic heritage. And because I'm, like I said, I'm very forthright and I'm kind of stupid, I'm, I'm a bit socially stupid. When it comes to this stuff, I'm socially stupid. I've gotten better at it, but still, I said, okay, there's an angel, I want to go talk to her to see if I can offer something. I, don't, I wasn't asking her out, but she was angelic and I said, hey, 
did you know that you're an angel? And she looked at me funny, and then she didn't know what to say, and then we parted for a while for the work, and then later we met up and we were talking, and she, she admitted that she knew that she had this angelic heritage, she was European, and uh, she didn't know what to do with it, that she had these strange dreams, and she had these strange powers, but one thing she revealed to me, she said she always felt like if she used her power, she would destroy things. She said to me that I'm a destroyer. And I, said, I thought to myself, how can, she's an angel, clearly, I was correct, and how can she think she's a destroyer? She, she doesn't want to use her power because she's going to destroy things. So I realized that she's been manipulated, she's been programmed. You see, this is how it works. She's been made to fear her power, and the fear used is that you will destroy if you activate your power. So, because they cannot deactivate you, so they make you have this fear, this nightmare, this false idea, this delusion, and that person shuts themselves off. And you can see her life was in a bit of a jilt, and she's in a movie set, she was young, she, she could have been in school, she could have been working, she could have been married, she could have been doing all kinds of things, but because she shut off her power, her energy's not flowing, she's afraid to use her power. Her life is also being crippled. And this, I, I tried to tell her in my view, that this is completely a false idea. You have angelic heritage, angels don't destroy things. But she believed that. She was, and who knows how many years that's been in, implanted in her head. And it could be some dark entity, could be some dark sorcerer, could be anything. But these kinds of beings will know she's an angel they will, if I can tell she has angelic heritage, other people can tell. If other people don't want her to use her power, they will say, hey, you're not supposed to use your magical power because you're going to blow up things and you're going to hurt children. And the woman says, well, I don't want to hurt children. I better shut off my power. And this is the problem in the world. You guys and a lot of people are shutting off all their power and meanwhile, there's endless, countless, perpetual wars. There's this, the secret societies are trying to control the world. There's this worldwide economic depression that's going to be used more to control the world. And there's, you know, there's endless laws and security and there's drones flying around shooting people. And everybody who came here to help is shutting themselves off. And those who turn themselves on, they're going nuts and having delusions. <laughs> so we have to get away from that. You're going to have to be brave to, to re-educate yourself, to reprogram yourself, to, and then to help others to learn and understand and to accept the fact that we will make mistakes. But I guarantee you this, from my lips to your ears, no matter who you are, you will not be able to destroy the world. I don't care if you're an angel. I don't care if you're a great angel. I don't care if you're the daughter of Jesus Christ. You cannot destroy this place. Okay? And if you think you can, it's called delusion. Even an evil sorcerer cannot destroy this place. Nobody on this earth has the power to destroy the earth. Nobody. And you can see throughout the last 8,000 years, it has not been destroyed. That's proof. That's evidence. That's evidence. And how many angels have come here during that time? How many great beings have come here during that time? How many Stellans? How many aliens? How many advanced creatures have come here that time? 
The world has not been destroyed. How many motherships have passed by here? The world has not been destroyed. How many dictators? How many tyrants? The world has not been destroyed. How many dark emperors? The world has not been destroyed. How many magicians and Merlins? The world has not been destroyed. That's your proof. So be careful if you have these silly ideas because they're silly ideas. You came here with a magical power. You need to develop that magical power. You need to activate yourself. You need to unleash it. That, this is what I'm about. This is what this series is about. If you can handle it, let's move forward. If you still need somebody to hold your hand and wash your feet, this is not the place. Reality magicians, they're tougher than everybody else. They're harsher than everybody else. They have a, a bit of a temper. They have a passion for existence. They have a passion for life. The kids getting vaccinated, they want to go there and slap that nurse. That's a reality magician. They have passion because they're alive. Not all this, this lovey-dovey stuff. So back to the original question. We had that A, B, C, D, or E. We had the we had the moon, the president, the dream, the turtle, and what else? We had the the nuke. What was the answer? E. None of the above. Now your first clue was the fact that I. It's so obvious I made all those things up. That may not always be true. I may ask you a question that I didn't make up. But all these things, the moon and the speech about Iran and the dream of the fish and the whale and the old turtle dying and the nuclear head going missing, has nothing to do with anything. Because the president has no connection to the moon. The fish and the whale doesn't mean it's uh, Iran and America, for example. You might be thinking that. But you could think that. You could say, well, the fish is Iran and the whale is America. The whale is going to eat the fish. No. The old turtle, the old turtle could have some cosmic representation. Could have some uh, shift in uh, shift in reality. Because the turtle is significant, the turtle is a the turtle is intimately connected to the earth. But I didn't have that. The only thing I had about the turtle was loss of human wisdom. I don't think that a turtle represents human wisdom, and that by dying a turtle dying we lose human wisdom. But you could think that. So anyway, all these things are too jumbled up. They're not connected. The full moon is not connected to the turtle. Your dream is not, has nothing to do with Iran. The nuclear warhead may or may not have gone missing. They might have miscounted. And the, these things go missing all the time. I've seen reports where the nuclear warheads are going missing all the time. They're miscounted. There are so many, there are so many unaccounted for around the world. They said, like, even if there's like 50, there's 50 portable nukes unaccounted for around the world at any time, you know. So, if one goes missing, well, there's already 50 missing, so can't have anything to do with it. So, when you break everything down, they're, they're not connected. Each of them could be significant, but they're, they're not, there's no end of the world, there's no great prophecy, etc., etc.